The Lord be with you. And with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, who sends you forgive, I forgive him them, and who send you retain, I retain. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nails mark, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it on my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have come to believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but they are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this gospel this morning, we focus on Thomas. Usually we call him the doubting Thomas. A man who knew Jesus for the last three years in his ministry. He was close to Jesus. He loved Jesus. But somehow, somewhere, right after the resurrection, Thomas disappeared. He no longer want to be part of, apparently, as a human, he couldn't understand why Jesus had to die as a criminal, why Jesus has to suffer so much. You just put yourself on his shoes. You just imagine the trauma that all of them went when they saw the way Jesus died. They all ran away. I said, how can I follow this guy? How can I follow him to the end? Look the way he died. They did not understand why had that happened. They didn't even believe anymore. They just walk away. So again, the Bible tells us they met for the first time at the upper room. It was the same room that Jesus had done the Last Supper. 
and he wasn't there. He didn't want to be there. He just ran away on his own. Why? He was confused. He was a pessimist. He didn't believe on anything anymore. And he just he didn't want to know anymore. Somehow by the Spirit, the apostle called him and said, hey, listen, come over. They invite him over for the second time. But this time he came. He came. He was among them. So what happened? What happened on that day on the upper room? The door was closed, window closed, everything was locked, sealed. Why? They were scared to death. See, you might understand. They thought the same way Jesus was persecuted and died, they'll be their turn also. They thought they're going to come and take him and also crucify him or kill them. They were scared to death. And they locked themselves on that room in prayer. And Thomas, this time, was with them. So what happened? Door locked, window locked, everything locked, seal locked, the whole thing is locked. And all of a sudden, Jesus is on their midst. The only way this can happen to his divinity, he showed to them who he was, divine. He just came right on the middle of all of them. Just imagine if, you, if that happened to you on your room, praying, the house is closed, and Jesus appeared to you. You just imagine what mind boggling it could have been, especially for Tom. I mean, Tom, St. Thomas, when he saw that, he just could not believe. He didn't know what to say. You know what to do. He probably fell on his feet from remorse. He fell on his feet. And what did he say? My Lord and my God, my King and my Creator, my Lord and my God, my King and my Creator. Amazing, sometimes happen to us. Many times, many times, we want to see to believe. It's our, it's our, our human condition. We condition to believe if we touch something, if we see something. But what Jesus said on the end, happy are those who don't see and believe. That almost telling Thomas, I said, listen, Thomas, you believe because you saw me? If you never had seen me, would you have never believed in me? That happened to all of us. This pessimism, this lack of faith sometimes, and sometimes the unbelief that is alive and well. Most of when we receive the Holy Eucharist, do we believe He's present on the Holy Eucharist? Do we proclaim the Lord when we receive the Holy Eucharist? Do we believe? Do you believe? Or unbelief like Thomas did today on the gospel. This is why when the celebrant left the holy sacrament, Jesus, the body and blood, what we say, my Lord and my God, am I worthy? Forgive me, guide me. The infinite love and mercy of the Lord. God in his infinite love, his compassion, his mercy, God is merciful. God came to that room because they need to continue their mission. Their mission, they, they, <clears throat> they had to start their mission. And what he said to them, the same way my father sent me, I send you, including Thomas. The same thing happened to all of us. God comes to us. He sent us out to proclaim the word. You might not say why word, but by your action, the way you act your faith, the way you show your faith, not by talk and talk sometime, but what you do to others. We are called, all of us, my dear brothers and sisters, to listen to the call, especially when we receive the Holy Eucharist. What more call we want? 
And not only that, the beautiful word that Jesus came and stood on their mat and said to them, Peace be with you. Peace from Christ. It is not a human peace. It is not I give you peace be with you. It's almost an assurance. It's almost saying, yes, I'm God and I'm telling you, peace be with you. Do we understand that? When Jesus tells you and I, peace be with you. Can we drink in and understand what that means? He tried to calm the disciples down. They were so anxious. They were so scared. They didn't know what to do. They were confused. They almost everyone was a pessimist. What he said to them, he bring their blood pressure down. He bring their unbelief. Peace be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, this gospel today is one of the most hundreds and thousands affirmation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Many people don't believe he rose from the dead. Many people even ignore it. But we, the chosen one, we do believe that he's risen and well. Jesus Christ is alive and well. He's with us every single day with his love and mercy. God is so merciful. God is so good. He does so many good things. I could witness this last week, his love and mercy. I could witness last week the way things happen on my own private life. And I could see the work of God in my life. If we leave everything on God's hands, we will see God in everything. If we leave everything in God's hands, we will see him. We will feel him. He will speak to us. He will guide us and tell us what to do. Tell us what to go, how to do it, and when to do it. It happened to me last week. To me, it was an awareness. And this gospel is very apropos for me, for my own experience, my own spiritual journey. Yes, he's alive and well. He told me on that day that I had to be a place. He told me on that day I had to pray for that person. He told me on that day that person needed prayer. And I was there for that person. I pray for that person. And while we praying, he passed. He passed, yes. The man before he died, he needed prayers. Because God is merciful. He's mercy of God for that person. He wanted someone to pray for him. It happened to be me. Why I was there, and now I know why. Why it happened here in Miami, now I know why. I felt it. It could be sometimes overwhelming, driving back home. I just said, Lord, you are working in me, with me. You know, we all go in our lives sometimes, and we see things around us, and we call it coincidence. Everything we see is coincident. My dear brothers and sisters, there is no such a coincidence. Everything on our life to the believers, it is God incident. God will lead us to do what he thinks is best for that person. God chose people to be their messenger, to be God met to them, to be their guardian angels. We all have a guardian angel. We all have one. But sometimes he sends us humans. He sent a man or woman to tell us something about God, to lead us to do something. I can name few in my life who led me to be what I am today. 
I can name people when I look back and I pray for these people because they done God's will. They approached me to be what I am today. They helped me for what I am today. Not them. God's will be done. God will be done. We pray every day to our Father. Fifty times, God knows how many times we pray. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the gospel today tells us that Thomas finally, he came to the room. He came. Probably he was kind of convinced to come. We don't know the fact. The fact we know that he was there. I want to quote you St. Augustine of Hippo. St. Augustine said something so beautiful of what had happened. And I need to quote St. Augustine. I hope my cell phone don't go crazy. Okay. And this is so powerful, the way St. Augustine speaks about St. Thomas. And I quote St. Augustine. But when Jesus showed Thomas the very places where he had his doubts, Thomas exclaimed, my Lord and my God. He touched his flesh. He proclaimed his divinity. But what did he touch? The body of Christ. Was the body of Christ the divinity of Christ? The divinity of Christ was the word. The humanity of Christ was soul and flesh. Thomas could not touch the soul, but he could perceive it. Because the body that had been dead was moving about alive. But that word is subject, neither to change, nor to contact. It neither regresses, nor progresses, neither fails, nor flourishes. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. That is what Thomas proclaimed. He touched the flesh. He invoked the word because the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Amen.